In this video, we will learn how to do rapid sequence intubation, where we induce unconsciousness and paralysis in an acutely unstable patient to facilitate tracheal intubation with low risk of aspiration. First, get everything ready. Direct laryngoscope, suction catheter, oxygen source, cardiac monitor with a blood pressure, pulse oximeter, and end-tidal CO2 waves, ambo bag with face mask, endotracheal tube with a stylet and 10cc syringe to inflate the cuff. Check and make sure your patient has two IV accesses and finally prepare your medications. Second step is to assess the patient anatomy. Using 3-3 rule, a normal patient can open his mouth to permit three of his own fingers between his incisors, three fingers along the floor of the mandible and two fingers in the superior laryngeal notch. Also assess malampathy score to predict difficult airway. It estimates the oral space. Class 1 predicts easy airway. Class 4 predicts extreme difficulty. Third step is pre-oxygenation. The goal is to replace nitrogen in the alveoli with oxygen. Using 100% oxygen delivered at the highest available flow rate, ideally more than 40 liter per minute and for at least 3 minute duration. For a patient with adequate spontaneous ventilation, use non breather mask. You can add ketamine 1 mg per kilogram in agitated patient. This will allow effective pre-oxygenation without depressing respiratory drive. If the patient has inadequate spontaneous ventilation, use back valve mask. Non-invasive positive pressure ventilation and sitting position will improve pre-oxygenation in morbidly obese patient. Am I ready now? Wait! How's the blood pressure? Hypotensive patients need small dose of vasopressors prior to induction. Norepinephrine or phenylephrine can be used. Hypertensive patients will benefit from small dose fentanyl prior to laryngeal manipulation. Fourth step is induction. You can choose between four agents. First agent we will talk about is etomidate. Etomidate is the preferred agent to use in stroke and coronary artery disease situations but it can lower seizure threshold for those who had seizures and also known to suppress adrenal cortisol so consider adding glucocorticoid our second agent is midazolam good thing it can cause amnesia but also can cause hypotension through encarded depression please note that the dose for both first agents is the same 0.3 mg per kilogram our third agent is ketamine it stimulates catecholamines so it's the preferred agent to use in asthma and shock situations, but need to be avoided with elevated intracranial pressure or hypertensive crisis. Now we move to the fourth agent, propofol, best to use in asthma and status epilepticus, but be careful, it can cause hypotension. Please note the same dosing, 1.5 mg per kilogram for propofol and ketamine. Those doses based on lean body weight for induction agents except for propofol where we should use ideal body weight. Step number five, neuromuscular blocking agent. Choose between two agents. First is depolarizing agent, succinylcholine, 1.5 mg per kilogram of total body weight. Paralysis will occur in 60 seconds and last for 10 minutes. Contraindicated if your patient has ever had malignant hyperthermia. Also avoid using with hyperkalemia, neuromuscular disease, muscular dystrophy, or rhabdomyolysis, or if your patient had a stroke or burn older than 72 hours. Second is non-depolarizing agent, with much less contraindications. Rocaronium, 1 mg per kilogram of ideal body weight, can also achieve paralysis in 60 seconds, but will last for 45 minutes. Now, make sure your patient is in a sniffing position if possible. You can achieve that using 10 cm non-compressible pillow, 35 degree neck flexion, 15 degree face plane extension. Why sniffing position? This MRI image comparing sniffing to neutral, head lift and extension positions. Sniffing will keep laryngeal axis close to vision line. Also note a referential curve angle. A little lift on the tongue base and you will see the vocal cords. Ramp position is preferred in morbidly obese patient. With patients face parallel to the ceiling, external auditory meters, 
and sternal notch are horizontally aligned. Open the patient's mouth using your thumb and index. Then enter the laryngoscopy from the right angle till you see the epiglottis. Swipe the tongue toward the middle and move your blade toward the arrow. To see the vocal cords, these are vocal cords of use. The goal is to see grade A. Advance the endotracheal tube, pull the stylet out and inflate the cuff. Then confirm the tube position using colorimetric CO2 detector, symmetric breath sounds and chest x-ray. Here we came to the end. Please like, share and subscribe. Activate the bell alarm if you would like to hear more from us in the future. Thank you.